Corinthians chapter 3. Philippians 3, and I'm going to uh, begin to read uh, at verse 12. Philippians 3 and verse, verse 12. And while you're turning there, let me say this. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, listen to me. Faith is the victory. Now let that sink in. Faith is the victory. Read with me, beginning with verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal it unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an example. I want to draw your attention to verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I want to talk to you about the power a past sins, a past sins. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Father, how we thank you, how we praise you tonight. God, to be able to gather together, Lord, in love, love lifted us. God, we gather in love. God, that we, get, we gather before a loving God. And Lord, we ask you, Father, supply our needs tonight. Father, I know, I know so well my inability. I know, God, that of myself and by myself, I can do nothing. But Lord, as I was reading this scripture, studying this scripture, Father, you spoke to my heart. And God, I want so to get across to our people. Lord, what you gave to me, I pray you'll help me to do that tonight. I pray, Father God, that you'll use this to accomplish thy purpose in every heart. God, I'll give you all the glory, all the praise. For it's in Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Amen. You know, it's amazing to me how God in his word seems to anticipate the things that Satan will use to hinder us in our service. But, you know, it shouldn't amaze us because our God is omniscient, amen? He knows what the devil's going to do before he does it. And, beloved, he, he knows everything. And we see that in this scripture. Here in this scripture, Paul begins to address Things in his past, in his past, past sins, past mistakes, past failures, past errors in judgment. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't list his past sins here, though he does uh, elsewhere in Scripture. But here, beloved, he simply says, forgetting those things which are behind forgetting those things which are behind. Why, why would Paul even mention those things which are behind? Because, beloved, the Holy Spirit who inspired him to write this knows 
that, that uh, past sins, listen, can hinder us from going forward, from going forward. And God wants Christians to go forward. Can I get an amen on that? God wants Christians to go forward. Oh, but, but, but how the devil, beloved, will bring to our remembrance past sins. And those past sins, beloved, will fill us with guilt. They'll fill us with sorrow. They'll fill us with shame. They'll fill us with doubts. And they'll keep us from going forward for Christ, for the Lord. Now, get the picture here. Paul is trying to get them to press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God. But they won't. They won't, beloved, as long as the power of past sins has hold of them, has hold of them. Folks, I've seen that so many times in my ministry. I have seen Christians, Christians who because of past sins, Maybe, beloved, before they got saved or, or after they got saved, but they sinned. And, and beloved, they, they become totally useless for the present because the power of sin has hold of them, of past sin. The power of past sin with its guilt and its shame and its doubts and its sorrows hindered them from pressing forward for Christ for reaching for that prize. So Paul tells them here, he tells them what to do to break, beloved, the power of past sins. Now, let's look at what he says. Look at what he says. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. Paul begins by saying, if you want to move forward for Christ, you've got to forget those things behind. Now, somebody says, preacher, that's impossible. It's impossible to forget. You know what? You're right. You're right. It, it, it is impossible. I mean, how many of us, beloved, can forget something bad? Something bad that happens in our life, especially, beloved, if it's bad that we have done. How can we forget that? I mean, if you go get drunk and you pull out in front of a car and somebody gets killed, can you ever forget that? Can you ever forget it? Or if you tell a lie and you ruin somebody's life, I mean ruin it, beloved, can you ever forget that? No, we can't. We can't. Folks, it's impossible to will yourself to forget the past, but, beloved, I would remind you that with Christ, all things are possible. All things are possible. But how is it possible to forget our past sins, beloved, even with Christ? Folks, it's possible, listen, by neglecting the past, by neglecting the past. The Greek word that's translated forget here is the word adelphus, adelphus. And beloved, it means to neglect, to neglect. Paul, beloved, listen, he didn't literally forget the past. I mean, if you read the Bible, you'll see several times when Paul, beloved, mentioned his past. I mean, he didn't literally forget it. Beloved, he told his, he told uh, uh, his, uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the Jews how he persecuted, beloved, the people, how he persecuted God's people. In Acts chapter 22, he went into detail. He said, I persecuted him even unto death. He didn't forget that. Not literally. Not literally. Chapter 26 of Acts, Paul admitted, beloved, that he had been a Pharisee, an enemy of Christ before his conversion. Look in this same chapter, verse 6. 
Paul speaking about himself, he said, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. <coughs> he said, I persecuted them. I put them to death. I threw them in jail. <coughs> Paul said, of sinners, I am chief. I am chief. Oh, listen, Paul looked, beloved, Paul hadn't forgotten his past, but he had, listen, neglected his past through Christ, through Christ. See, the word neglect, according to Webster's uh, 1828 dictionary, beloved, means to omit, to omit, Folks, Paul omitted his past. He neglected his past. He showed indifference to his past, beloved. (coughs) How did he do that? Listen to me. By faith, by faith in Christ. By faith, by faith. Folks, faith, listen to me, is as necessary for our past sins as it is for our present. This is necessary. Listen, you can't can't be saved without faith, amen? Beloved, we sin now, and beloved, we have faith that our sin is under the blood, amen? Let me tell you something, you gotta have that same faith for those past sins, that it's under the blood, that it's under the blood, and if it's under the blood, You omit it. You omit it. You omit it. Paul, beloved, hadn't forgotten his terrible sins of the past, but he omitted them, beloved, from any importance whatsoever because he believed, listen to me, he believed, beloved, they were paid for. They were paid for. Believe, he believed, beloved, that they were under the blood of Christ, of Christ. And because they were, he believed God. When God said, I have cast your sin from the far as the east from the west. He believed God, beloved. God had cast his sin away just like he said he would. He believed God when God said, I see them no more. He believed God when God said, your sins are, 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 were as white, as, excuse me, as, as scarlet and red like crimson, but I made them white as snow. He believed God. He believed God. Oh, Satan wanted him to feel guilt. Satan wanted him to feel shame, but beloved, his past sins were no more. How can you feel guilty for something that no longer exists? How can you? I'm preaching to myself tonight because I've had this problem. How can can you? Satan wanted him to wallow in sorrow, to wallow in despair, to to wallow, beloved, in, in defeat beloved, over past wrongs that he had done. How can you sorrow and despair, beloved, over that which God has declared clean? How can you? How can you? Folks, Paul broke the power of past sin in his life by faith, by faith in what Christ had done for him on that cross, by faith, beloved, in what God said about his past sin. And he remembered his past, beloved, but, he had, but it had no power over him through, through what Jesus had done. Through what Jesus had done. You see, those things behind were neglected were neglected. They were treated with with indifference, beloved. Why? Why should he consider them? They were gone. They were gone. They were gone. They were gone. They were omitted by the blood of the Lamb. They no longer existed. And because of that, Paul, beloved, could press forward, forward for Christ, forward. Tell me, Christian, 
do you truly, truly believe in the vicarious death of Jesus for your sin? Do you truly believe God when God says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Do you believe God? Somebody says, yes, preacher. I've got faith in what Jesus did for me on Calvary. I'm glad. But do you remember, beloved, what James said? He said, faith without works is what? Is dead. Is dead. In other words, beloved, there is a living faith. And that living faith, beloved, it, 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 it will, it, it, when, when you have that living faith, beloved, that shows itself in what you do. In what you do. And then there is a dead faith, beloved, and that dead faith will not show anything because it's dead. It's dead. Now, that dead faith can't help you. It's not real faith. But if you have a living faith, a real faith, beloved, in Jesus dying for your sin, it will show it will show, beloved, you won't still be sorrowing over past sins. It will show you won't feel that old guilt anymore. It will show, beloved, you will, you will not be under the power of sin. The power of sin. No, you will press on. You'll press on for the mark of the high calling. You will press on toward perfection serving him and loving him with joy and gladness, not wallowing in the things that no longer exist. That no longer exist. How many of you, when you were coming up, your mamas and your daddies talked about the booger man going to get you? Oh, I see some hands, okay. Mr. Marshall did that to you, didn't he? Should. Okay. Guess what? You were scared then because you really believed there was a booger man, didn't weren't you? But you know what? One day you started believing the truth that there wasn't a booger man and you were no longer afraid. Amen? Folks, those sins that we have committed, and I say we, those sins which are behind us, those sins which we've committed in our past, beloved, they are no longer there. They're gone. Amen. They're gone. Amen. So why do you sorrow over them? Why do we, we fret over them? Why do we, beloved, consider them? We ought to neglect them. Amen. We ought to neglect them. I hope I'm getting this across. Look at your Christian life. Look at it now. Are you living in the past? Or are you pressing forward? Pressing forward. Have you neglected, omitted that which is behind? Or are you, beloved, grieving like you just did it today? Today. Paul says, press forward, Christian. For the prize, forgetting those things which are behind. He said, be followers together of me. You have me for an example. I've got these things, but they are behind. And I neglect them. I omit them. They don't exist anymore. One other thing that the Holy Spirit brought to my attention as I was studying this because Paul believed those past sins, I get this, actually spurred him on to the prize before him. How about that? Though, because he believed, beloved, 
those past sins actually spurred him on forward, pressing forward. Somebody says, preacher, I, I, I don't understand. Listen, if you look at your past sin in unbelief of what Jesus has done, they will cripple you. Beloved, they will haunt you. They will, beloved, keep you from going forward. But if you look at your past sins as Paul did through eyes of faith, beloved, they will motivate you to press on toward the prize. You say, preacher, I don't understand. It's all in how you look at those things behind you. It's how you look at them. Let me put it this way. As a Christian, if you look back on your past in unbelief, what will you see? You'll see your sin still there. That's what you'll see. It will, it, you will see it, beloved. You will feel the old guilt. You will feel, beloved, the same old shame. You will feel the same old sorrow. And the power of past sins has got you, has got you. But if you look, beloved, at your past as Paul did in faith, what do you see? Paul, beloved, could look back. He did not see his sin. He saw the power of the cross to cleanse sin. He saw the cross. He didn't see the sin. He saw the cross. And oh, how he wanted to share, beloved, the cross with everyone because, beloved, he saw what the cross did for his sin. He wanted to share it. He wanted to share it. What did Paul see as he looked in faith? He didn't see the shame. He saw the glory of God. Oh, what glory is his that he loved me that much. What glory that he could save a wretch like me. What glory that he could overcome death and hell. All such glory must be told, beloved. It must be exalted. It must be praised. It must be witnessed to others. So Paul went out telling the story, showing forth the glory of God Christ, sharing it with the world. You see, it spurred him on. It spurred him on. What did Paul see when he looked, beloved, at his past in faith? He didn't see his failures. No, he saw the power of God to overcome his failures. The power of God. Tell me, tell me, What's more powerful than sin? What's more powerful than death? What, beloved, is more powerful than Satan? Jesus is. Beloved, that's what Paul saw. He didn't see his failures when he looked back. He saw Jesus. He saw Jesus. And Jesus overcomes all of that. It's Jesus that goes with him as he presses forward. It's Jesus. And on he goes forward. Now fake failure may try him. And beloved sin may tempt him. And death may claim him. And Satan, beloved, will certainly resist him and fight against him. But Jesus is more powerful than them all. And Jesus is with him. It's Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. It's Jesus who said, Lo, I am with thee even to the end of the world. Oh, as Paul, beloved, looked at that which was behind him through eyes of faith, he, what he saw, beloved, encouraged him and motivated him and spurred him on to press forward for Christ, for Christ. And press forward, he did, taking the gospel, beloved, all over the known world of that day. 
Folks, all of us. Oh, you know, that's one thing about past sins. Past sins feel like, make you feel like you're the only one. You know, you did this thing. And you're the only one. Let me tell you something. All of us, all of us have done wrong things. Before we got saved, and I dare say after we got saved. Amen? Come on. If we got got a super saint here, I want to know it. I don't think we do. I don't think we do. We've done things in our past, sins, failures, wrong. And those past sins, beloved, hold you back. They hold you back or they encourage you forward. Faith makes the difference. Faith makes the difference. And if you, beloved, are being held back, and the power of sin's got you. It's because, beloved, you haven't, you haven't looked at those sins in faith in what Jesus did and what God promised. And what God promised. Again, I am preaching to myself. To myself. Do you find yourself Believing these things, or excuse me, reliving these things and fall, feeling the sorrow and feeling the sadness and feeling the failure and feeling the guilt. Or have you by faith neglected, counted as unimportant, committed these things or omitted these things? From your from your your life. Faith makes the difference. Real faith. Living faith. You see, faith is the victory. Amen. Faith is the victory. Oh, poor imprisoned Christian. Listen to me. Christ can set you free. From the power of past sin. If you. Will truly. Believe. Truly. Believe. I want you to bow your heads. And close your eyes. Heavenly Father. I think about. All the time, all the hours, God, that I have spent grieving over past sins, grieving, God, over things I've done that are behind me now, grieving, God, over things that don't exist anymore. God, what a foolish thing. What a foolish thing. When all I had to do was pick up your word and God believe what Jesus did, really did, for me on Calvary. Believe, God, what you have said about my past sins. And Father, Lord, since, since you showed me this, God, I felt those, those fake chains fall away. And God, I feel free. I feel free. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Lord, I know I've probably done a poor job explaining what you showed to me. But Lord, I pray you'll take it now. And I pray, God, that Lord, you'll use it to free every person, every person that God has felt that affliction. 
from past sins. God, let us leave here rejoicing. Let us leave here praising you and thanking you for what Jesus has done for us and God, what you said, Lord, about our sin. God, may we leave going forward, pressing forward for the prize of the high calling of Christ. God, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed, would you stand?